Well, let's talk about what a table is in Q. Well, I'll start again with what it's not. It's not a collection of rows. In SQL and traditional databases, or at least relational databases, you have a collection of rows. In Q, it's not. In Q, a table is a collection of columns. And in fact, we could construct the table from fundamental form using dictionaries, but I'm going to skip that. I'm just going to go straight to the scoop and show you how to make a table directly using what is called in Q table syntax. If you understand that tables in Q are columns and columns are lists, then you're halfway home already because every operation on a table is an operation on columns. Therefore, it's an operation on lists. Therefore, it's a vector operation. Right? So this is the fundamental difference between tables in Q and tables in SQL. Tables are column. There are no row-wise operations. There are column-wise operations, which are vector operations. Now you see the whole point of doing all this vector and list stuff up till now, because that's what tables are. In fact, it may interest you to know that the Q in the name of the language no, it doesn't stand for quirky because of all the little funny things about Q. It stands for query. Tables are first-class items in Q, and there's a built-in query language that we'll see a little piece of shortly that we call QSQL. It kind of sort of looks like SQL, except one major difference. It operates on columns. It's vector operations. It does not operate on rows. All right, so we're going to construct the table. And it's easier to do this by constructing each column of the table and then laying the columns into the table. It's just less typing and it fits on the screen better. So this is going to be a trades table. It's going to be an oversimplified trades table, but it's actually useful enough that you can see stuff. So let's start. The table is going to have columns called dates, times, quantities, symbol, that's a ticker symbol, right? And we're going to have prices. And in order to fit things on the screen better, I'm going to abbreviate some of those. But here we go. Let's, let's create each of these columns one by one, and we're going to be bold here. I mean, this is a five-year-old MacBook, but 10 million? Pah, nothing. So we're going to construct a table whose columns have length 10 million. Now, we might say it has 10 million rows, but remember, as Neo learned in the original Matrix movie, the only good one, when he went to see the Oracle and the little kid was bending the spoon, he said, the secret is to realize there is no spoon. So in Q, the secret is, secret is to realize there are no rows. Well, speak of them, but they don't actually exist physically. There are only columns. So we're going to instruct, we're going to construct column by column this table. So the first thing we will do is we'll construct what's, what will be the date column. And we are just going to say, well, we know how to do this already. I gave you a sneak preview. We'll do it for January of 2018, and we'll pretend that we traded on every day, but there's no trading on New Year's. We don't, for this purpose, we don't care. Let's add, not 100, not a whatever, 10 million random numbers between 0 and 31. Did he really do that that fast? Yep. All right. Now let's make some times. And what we'll do is we'll make 10 million random times between midnight and midnight. So starting at 00, zero colon 00, zero blah, 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 we'll go to 2400. And remember, it does not include the endpoint. So this will be 10 million random times between midnight starting inclusive and midnight ending not inclusive. All right, so there we go. Uh, let's build quantities. I'll abbreviate this to QTYS. And how we're going to do this, let's make them lots of 100, right? So we'll say 10 million. Uh, we don't want zeros, so we'll add one to them. And then we'll multiply by 100. So that's just some reasonable number for its quantities, right? And now we're going to use Apple, Amazon, and Google. So 
what I want to do is I want to randomly select 10 million symbols from the list of Amazon, Apple, and Google, and I'm going to associate prices with them. So there's many ways to do this. So that I don't have to introduce any new operators, I'm going to do it this way. Let me take 10 million indices between 0, 1, and 2, not including 3. All right, and so now I will say my symbols will be Apple, Amazon, and Google. So this is a list, and I'm going to index into that list according to the random list of indices that I, I just picked. So I haven't shown you how to index into a list before, and you're going to say, well, wait a minute. That, that indexing into a list, that looks just like function application. You put the function juxtaposed with the space and the argument. And here you put the list juxtaposed the space with the argument. The argument has to be a vector in this case, but hey, we're a vector language. How does that work? And the fact of the matter is, yes, Q considers a list really to be a function. It's a function that maps the index to the item at that index, or otherwise put, it's a function that does positional retrieval. You give it a position, it retrieves the item at that position. Of course you could use brackets, but that's like putting training wheels on your bicycle. We don't do that. All right, so we also need to get some prices. Here we're going to have to do a little cue. I happen to look up what was the starting price for Apple uh, for, 19, for 2018. Apple, Amazon, and Google. All right, so here are the starting prices. Uh, I'm rounding off the, the decimal points. And we will use the same indices to index into that. Now, why am I doing that? Because these indices we use to look up the ticker symbols. We'll use exactly the same indices to look up. They're randomly generated to look up the prices. So that gives us corresponding prices. And now we want to do a little Q. We, well, we, we don't want them to be the same constant price. So we'll do a little Q here. We'll say uh, we're going to stretch those by about 3%. 0.03, and well, we don't want that to be constant either, so 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So we'll take 10 million random numbers between 0 and 0.03, and we'll add that to 1. So this is just a multiplicative factor between 1 and 1.03, randomly chosen to, to stretch these prices, so that we don't have constant prices. Everybody with me? So let's do this, and now let's look at it again. So right to left, I'm using the same indices to index the prices as I did to index into the symbols. So I get my random prices, well, no, sorry, my constant prices corresponding to the, the symbols. Now I shake them up a little bit. I just say, well, let's say between 0 and 3% randomly chosen, add to 1, multiply that, bang. So we've now got some prices that look, well, they're random, but they're within a reasonable range. And now we can make our table, right? Here's how we make a table. It kind of looks like a list, but it's got this funny thing in the beginning. The square brackets say, this is a table. They actually mean more, but we don't need to know about that right now. And here's what the table syntax looks like. We have a column called date, and I'm going to load that from a variable called dates. We have a column called time, and I'm going to load that from a variable called times. We have a column called sim, which, which is loaded from a column called sims, uh, a variable called sims. We have a column called quantity, just to be short, and we're going to load that from QTYs. And we have a column called price, which I'm going to load from PX, the variable PXS. If I didn't make any Mistakes, I have a table, and if we display this table, well, it's scrolled off the screen, but you can see it's actually kind of reasonable, except that the dates and times are in random order. Ah, 
We have an operator in Q that can fix that. It's called XASC. This is an operator that will sort a table. And you can give it on the left the names of the columns that you want to sort. So this says sort by time within date. Date is the outer sort, time is the inner sort. And we'll just assign that back into T. And it does take a little time to sort this. You notice a couple of seconds. But remember, there are 10 million items in this table that it's sorting. And now, remember our, our friend the hash operator? I have to be careful if I say that in certain places. Five hash on the T says truncate the columns to five. All right, so there's the first five uh, rows, if you will, of the table T. And you notice they're in date and time order. And we have quantities and we have prices. So this is a table in Q. It's actually a pretty meaty table in Q. Um, it's got 10,000 items in each column. The columns all have the same length. And they're kind of sort of reasonable values. Now, this is not how things actually trade, right? Because the, the, the trade prices are just random from one tick to the next. Um, and that isn't the way things actually trade. You, you, you'd more want to say there's a random marginal increase or decrease from one trade to the next. But for our purposes, it's sufficient. So now we have a table with 10 million items in it. Yeah, try to do that in Excel, huh? What happens if you get Excel up to about 50 or 100,000? It dies. Try to do that in R. Try to do that in MATLAB. 100,000, they die. I'm on a five-year-old MacBook, 10,000. Q just laughs, all right? If you're on a big machine with lots of cores, you can do hundreds of millions or billions, right? So this is a table in Q.